The rescue operations are ongoing as an early morning earthquake, 7.2 magnitude, claimed at least four lives and injured 57 persons. More than 130 people are trapped after the strongest earthquake in 25 years caused the buildings to collapse and landslides to crash down from mountainous areas. This is a developing story and here is an update. Taiwan has been struck by its most powerful earthquake in 25 years, which measures 7.4 in magnitude. Officials have confirmed at least nine persons have died while rescuers are searching for more than 100 trapped. Five of the dead, including three hikers on the nearby trail, died from falling rocks. The epicenter is located about 18 kilometers, 11 miles south of Taiwan's Walin City, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. Tremors were felt as far as the capital, with videos showing buildings shaking violently. The quake initially set off tsunami warnings on the islands and neighboring countries, some of which have since been retracted. In the national aftermath of the earthquake, Japanese authorities issued a tsunami advisory for the island chain of Okinawa, as well as ordering people in southwestern Japan to move away from the coast. Officials are continuing to urge people to remain cautious as the tide level could change. Taiwanese authorities have now confirmed that overall, more than 100 are known to be trapped as a result of the earthquake. Of this, 77 of them are still trapped inside the Jiwen and Kinshu tunnels on the mountains in Hualien County. Two German citizens are also trapped in the Chongden tunnel in Taroku National Park. The remaining 50 people are trapped in four mini buses that were traveling from central Wallen City to nearby Taroko National Park. They are all staff being transported to the sixth place Taroko Hotel ahead of a four day long weekend from Thursday to Sunday for two local public holidays. Taiwan President Tsai has also posted a first message on X since the quick struck. And it is a specific message of gratitude to Japan and written in Japanese. Residents are advised to prepare for aftershocks potentially reaching or exceeding 6.5 magnitude in the coming three days. I have joining me to discuss the updates on Taiwan earthquake, a senior lecturer of geology, Vidimas University, Dr. Ekundayo Adikbeng. Good to have you join us. Thank you very much for having me. I'm happy to be here. So I, I, um, I was listening earlier to authorities in Taiwan, and they say that they were expecting a, re, a relatively mild earthquake, but it turned out to be um, 7.4 magnitude. What could have happened? Well, um, when we talk of earthquake, Taiwan itself is not um, a novice, or they are not new to earthquake because... Um, Every now and then, earthquake occurs in Taiwan. From 1999, for example, until now, they have more than 10 in the city, you know, where the earthquake actually took place. So I believe what, uh, what actually resulted into this kind of magnitude is most likely connected to the movement of the plate. Of course, earthquake forms due to the movement of the plate. And um, looking at the level of... Um, that the, the death rate, as well as the destruction of properties, one would have expected that we should have um, a magnitude that probably uh, would have been lesser. But however, I feel that the fact that Taiwan has a very robust preparedness plan for earthquake is one of the reasons why the level of casualty and um, destruction of properties, you know, is at a minimal level that we have at the present. So that's my take on that. Uh, absolutely. The, 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 the casualty figure is quite low when you com compare it to the magnitude of the earthquake. But let's talk about the short-term and long-term impact of an earthquake like th of this kind of mag magnitude. Well, talking about the long-term impact, maybe I should start with the fact that when an earthquake occurs, it is very normal to have aftershock. And um, based on available reports, the... Cities of Taiwan, they are already experiencing aftershock as we speak, and uh, there are possibility that this aftershock may continue, you know, over some weeks, you know, to come. And of course, when we talk about properties, properties are destroyed. The owners of those properties, you know, 
they, are, they will be counting their losses. As a nation, they will need to, at first, tighten up their seatbelt to look at what are those things they could do. As, as I mentioned earlier, although they have a very good and a robust uh, preparedness plan, there is a need to still look in and see what are those things that could be done to ensure that even when they experience a magnitude of this uh, impact in future, the um, death rate and other impact will be relatively low. So properties are lost. Um, death rate is, a, as, as of now, we're talking about nine. But the reality is, in the as event unfold, we may be having more and more increment in that number. Though we don't pray so, but that's just a reality of things on ground, as you speak. And more than uh, 57 people have also been reported injured. But I also wanted to ask you, um, because earlier a tsunami warning had been, uh, uh, you know, given, but later retracted. Is the worst over um, when you look at the situation of ground in Taiwan? Well, I wouldn't say so. Uh, why I respect the decision of the meteorological agencies in um, Japan and um, Philippines. Actually, when an earthquake happens, what happens is that the earthquake can cause a vertical displacement in the ocean floor. And this vertical displacement is actually what causes tsunami. So the normal thing to have done, going, looking at the fact that these nations are islands and they're actually flanking the focus of the earthquake, which is um, Taiwan itself, the normal thing to have been done is to actually declare warning immediately, as well to people who live around the coastal environment. But what they did was they actually monitored the rise in sea level and they realized that there's no significant rise in sea level between when the earthquake happened and as, so they, at the time they were calling off that um, warning on tsunami. So that was the decision. However, when it comes to natural disaster, the truth is our understanding is always limited. So for me, I feel that that the relax the relaxation of those warnings, I feel they are coming a little too early, looking at the magnitude of the earthquake that, that just happened. So there is still need to be careful. That would be my take. Absolutely. We're following development today. I will continue to report um, any update arising from that um, earthquake in Taiwan. Thank you so much for your time. Senior Lecturer of Geology, Redeemers University, Dr. Ekundayo Adikbeng. Thank you very much.